Hello. Hola. Welcome back. Thought I would shoot a little video. Been down here in the shop all day, uh, cleaning up and organizing and sort of just resituating stuff. Um, it's been like a mad dash, assembling stuff, painting stuff, and um, the parts that pile up can become a little overwhelming. So it's nice to uh, sort of spend some time and uh, re regroup and attack. So, yeah, this video will just be a little sort of what's been going on. So, yeah, let's do it. I guess I'll start uh, with the enclosure. Um, it's been a, must have been a couple days, maybe coming up on a week now since it's been dry or sprayed. And I think it was in the last video I showed a fingerprint that was right there. And I think it was the next morning. Uh, came down and was like man can't have this so we're a little sketched out like uh oh you know might might make it worse um but just scuffed uh scuffed the fingerprint down just scuffed the whole front of it down and uh, shot another coat and i was wet coat and uh -wee! it's looking like a million dollars i mean i don't know if it's gonna get us to uh sema but I reckon it'll be just fine for the grease. So that's cool. It's definitely uh, positive. So I think someone made a comment like, oh, don't rush her, you know? So I'm glad, uh, I'm glad now that we did it, so. I don't know if I have talked about this since this thing has sort of been, uh, had some stuff put on it. It's starting to look uber duber. Uh, foot pedal, all the casters. Um, this is where the coolant tank goes. All of that stuff is installed. That was the frame that I previously painted. And, um, got some grommets and some holes. Uh, the drawer slides are in. Uh, you can see there's some fasteners, some things on the other side have been installed. Uh, here are some uh, solenoids for the uh, drawbar and the air blast and uh, waiting on some uh, more push to connect fittings to get that sort of all dialed in and ran out of the green tube. So uh, I think we're gonna get some more of something else and reroute them. Here is the side of the cart. Got the intensifier on gauge the one-shot oiler for the y-axis ways uh, there's a regulator dryer filter whatever you want to call it um, put a pigtail on here um, just to take some stress off of that regulator mount you know it's not super super beefcake so it's a nice way of uh, being able to have that on there and not uh, rip the regulator off when it uh, goes time to unplug and plug it in and here is the Amazon air gun with, I think this came off Amazon too. It's some like super duper flexible coily hose. I think it's actually made by coil hose, um, but it's got swivels on both sides. And uh, I think it, it just fits sort of like the scale of the, uh, the machine, you know, it's not too big and it's uh, got a little color. So the gun will uh, mount, you know, on the enclosure. But for the time being, it sort of lives just uh, right there. And then the uh, on the bottom of the intensifier is, uh, that's the quick exhaust. So waiting for some more fittings there as well. Um, and then there's like a little exhaust muffler thing. So. Things are starting to come together. Still need to put the hard lines on. You can see here, uh, those are the brackets that I parkerized and those clamps on the top are machined out of some 
ABS. And then there is the uh, machine clamp from ABS as well that holds the uh, coolant return that goes through that hole there. Ta da! It's, it's here, it happened. I tore the machine down for the last time. Got all of the castings tore apart, all the rails, all of the hardware, everything stripped. And tomorrow I uh, think I might try to paint these up. So it's pretty cool seeing all of this, uh, all the hard work sort of laid out in front of you. And it's almost time. <laughs> So, I don't know if we've, these are the, this is the column, datum for the rails, um, this was machined as well, uh, the column was actually has, has a twist in it, so, uh, let me walk over there. So... To get like a flat reference when the rails were installed, that's what that's what these are right here. Where uh, these were the machined references, and one, two, three blocks fit on there. So the thing was clamped onto those flat references and uh, just lightly clamped, so you don't induce any twist into it. And uh, then the other side was machined for the rails. And there's the table. Same, same exact thing. And then the saddle. This one was pretty straightforward. Nothing really creative here to get it done. Just, uh, you know, clearance it for uh, you know, the column center part, uh, and the cars and the rails, and, uh, yeah, works, works good, straightforward, there's no funny business with, like, clearance or too thin, and the saddle, there's a little bit of Devcon still on there that needs to be knocked off, but, uh, other than that, this here little piece of Swiss cheese is ready to be put to work. And what a piece of work it was. If you know what one of these things looks like uh, from the factory, you'd be like, damn. Here is the column spacer. And uh, this thing is made out of a solid chunk of steel. It's like some uh, piece of bridge bulletproof armor from a bridge <laughs> anyways yeah super tough and uh yeah column spacer people do it uh, i don't know if anyone else has done it this way but uh, i think i mean the way that the column on the the grizzly mounts on the back is you know it's just cheesy no matter which way you look at it so uh in an effort to you know make something a little less cheesy uh so it came up with. So this is the back side of the column and um, or the back side of the base and the column rests, you know, sort of sits onto there and then bolts straight on. So um, typically a column spacer is just like long ass bolts and it's sort of just squeezing on there. And so this is like a little improvement or probably not necessary, but Super sick nonetheless. So there's a keyway, and this fits onto there. And uh, there's actually two bolts that bolt this to there, and uh, this sort of becomes a unit. So when I paint it, I'll just uh, dial it all in and uh, torque everything down, paint it as one piece, and uh, it won't be like a part that you take on and off. So, I think that's about it for the base. There was some, um, a long time ago, uh, when I had this in the mill, I had a big, long roughing end mill that I opened all of this up, cleaned up all the sides. Uh, 
you can see I cut all of the bottoms of this out. See, yeah, there's a you can sort of see a pattern. And then I brought this forward as well, and I'll spin around to the other side. And so here's the back side. I also clearance that. Um, I think that was. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but clearance nonetheless. So there's the base man. Z head. I'm gonna paint this guy as well. Um, pretty straightforward, just the run of the mill head. I think I am going to make some plugs though, maybe out of plastic and tap them into some of the holes on, not necessarily on the side because there's covers that go over here, but on the top, like these two. And I think I noticed like maybe one or two down here. Yeah, there's one, two, three. So probably make something out of plastic or something easily machinable and tap that in to plug them up because uh, yeah, we don't want you know, junk and stuff getting up in there. So, do that and uh, scuff it and buff it. Well, you can see too, uh, early in the project, this was, uh, that's like the reference surface that the spindle um, sits on, like pushes up against. And this was done better than, or redone, because it was pretty bad. So now it's nice and mated, flat mating surfaces. So in the other room, have been working on the enclosure and there's a fella on the CNC zone asking about, you know, oh, you gotta be working on the electronics by now and sure shit, here they are. Uh, yeah, sort of, after the box was painted, um, we, I put uh, all of the stuff on there that I knew uh, that's where it goes and it only goes there. Basically all of the spoken for holes are filled. So. There is the uh, power supply enclosure. That was originally gonna be in the uh, main enclosure, but there just flat wasn't going to be enough room, so whipped up that little doodad and also mounted the there's a braking resistor, um, just tagged it on the back side of there. And let's see here, have a uh, fan up top and some filter stuff and a little screen thing just for shits. But those are all easy things. Uh, there is a disconnect here. Um, I think a US, the USB goes here for your files. Uh, there's a computer power on here. Um, with some fuses here. So here we are looking down uh, on the enclosure. And I think this is the gist of the components that are gonna have to go in here. Uh, maybe a couple more things, but um, for right now, other than, I think there needs to be like a expansion uh, card or the smooth stepper. I'm not sure which one, but I think it plugs into one of the expansion ports. But so yeah, all across the top, most of this stuff is all DIN rail, and there's a couple more uh, DIN rail components. Um, the convenience outlet is for the NUC power supply. Uh, makes it straightforward. 
um, some control power so there's going to be an on off to the machine uh, from the operator panel um, power supply for uh, the smooth stepper power supply for some relays and some lights and I think this is for some lights as well um, VFD um, yeah so sort of still I mean I, this is where this is gonna go um, but as far as everything else I mean I think it would probably be nice to separate things by like you know control stuff and like computery kind of stuff so um, I don't know if anyone's that there's like you know uh, a sort of normal or standard um, granted this is not like standard in any means so take it with a grain of salt eh? so yeah man open to uh, people's experience never put one of these together at least the, the scale um, so open book the uh, the Noxure is pretty awesome. It, uh, it's mounted on there with uh, just the VESA mount, so it's just boom, simple. I'm going to use all of the USB ports, and I have an expander or an expansion thing that uh, hooks onto the case. Um, and uh, a VISTA pendant is also a USB. And I think that's it. Wireless keyboard. We'll see how that operates. <laughs> This is the fan. It's just like a 120 volt um, fan and it's quiet and pretty sweet. And also have some of this. I mean, I don't know how much room we're gonna have for um, sort of this loomy kind of stuff, but I might try to incorporate maybe just like one piece like through the center or this way or whatever. Um, it's just, you know, space is at a premium, so it's, you know, not gonna look like uh, like a really spacious enclosure, it just can't. So, I think these are the little Sane Smart guys. Um, circuit breakers or these fuse holders, probably not, or definitely not using those. Um, 3D printed case for smooth stepper, probably not going to use that. Some relays. I think this might be for control power. I don't really know. Anyways what's going on oh have to do the the mod bus I had no idea uh, if I need like a do I need like a serial converter to go from the the VFD to the smooth stepper or to my inputs outputs I don't know I'll have to look into it so all right it's hot and I'm rambling so thanks for watching and uh, thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe, we'll catch you in the next one, thanks.